Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Um, we are, it's at the top of the hour, and we are going to uh, just wait a few minutes as people roll in. Uh, so, um, so right now, uh, while we're just waiting people to come in, if, I, if, um, if you can hear me okay and my audio is good, there is a raise hand function in the GoToMeeting software. Um, if you can hear me okay and my audio is good, I either just hit the raise hand so I see that, um, or I, you know, use the chat function and just let me know that uh, that audio is not good. So, all right, great, we're seeing some hands. So let's give it. A, I'm just going to give it about a minute here, and I will come back and we will uh, we will start. Hello, everyone, and, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the time and the date have arrived, and, and we are super excited to talk to you about a, a COVID-19 e-commerce recovery roadmap and some great information that we um, are looking forward to, 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 to providing you uh, today. And we also welcome your questions, so please don't hesitate to drop questions and things in the chat box. We'd love um, the interactivity. And, uh, and would love to um, see your questions and what and what your interests are. So let's jump off here. Erwin, are you there? I just wanna make sure, just do a quick sound check, make sure I can hear you okay. Yes, uh, Jeremy, I'm here. Great, great. Let's go to the next slide, do a quick introduction. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself um, when, you, um, when you go, but let's um, give everybody a visual of who we are. So this is Jeremy LaDuke, um, EVP of Marketing for uh, Bridgeline Di Digital. And we have Erwin Siegel, who is our resident expert today, and is going to be walking us through some really amazing <laughs> tips. Okay. So um, I wouldn't uh, consider myself an expert. Uh, the more you know, the more you know how little you know. So, But I'm really excited as well uh, today to just uh, go through some of the uh, great tips that we have uh, collected, of course, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, that's all, but these are just a summary. We have focused it into about eight um, tips and uh, tricks and, uh, and advice how to recover from this uh, COVID, hopefully uh, the dawn of the post-COVID time here, but um, I'm really excited to, go, excited to go through the slides here. Great, great. So I'm going to spend about two minutes here. Um, I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of, of throwing a lot of statistics out there. However, I will tell you, as you all know, we are in such a unique time that I, I really think a couple of, of, a couple of um, slides around um, just some, some stats to help frame this up. You know, we're going to spend 30 to 40 minutes here and, and, and um, to help frame that up. Uh, let's, go, Erwin, let's go to the next slide. Um, Again, you know, the stats are always funny, but but the fact is, is this is such a unique time, and we really do need to understand the opportunity. You know, I don't think there. I, I'm not sure. I even believe in a post-COVID world. I think the world is what it is today, and we need to look at it as an opportunity as 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 business people, and we need to do, we need to find you know tips and takeaways now that we can go better our businesses with. So with that, um, I wanted to start with this. Because I just wanted to point out, I mean, some of these, you know, some of these incredible statistics about what COVID has done. I know we're all familiar with this, but check out the one, of course, for down, sell more online. We all know this. We've all seen our Amazon stock double since the beginning of the year. And so clearly people are buying more online. 
But also notice we're going to we're going to touch on all of these, right? We're going to touch on how do you communicate with your customers differently because every because the world is different, right? What kind of technology is being adopted and what can we take advantage of it and how do we sell more online? Let's go to the next slide. Um, this is interesting. This is looking backwards at e-commerce and how much it has grown. Um, and it's grown, obviously, as you can see at a pretty good clip here, you know, roughly 20 percent a year. Um, and you'll notice, you know, that the quote talks about how um, up, upheaval, you know, offers a chance, you know, to do things differently and better. But notice the underline where the key is to better serve your customers during this. And we're also going to talk about some tips that, that do just that. Now, looking backwards is, is, is always nice, but a lot easier than looking forward. I think we all agree um, this now looks forward. It takes that 2019 number of the 3.5 billion and it starts projected forward. And as you'll see, I mean, we're talking about the next just few years, you know, we are going to almost double again in e-commerce and this is global e-commerce. So I actually like the idea of this being what's called the great acceleration. I heard that term a few weeks ago. I really like it. And again, I think that this, that's, that's a great way of framing this up to say, what is the opportunity here and how do we take advantage of that opportunity? Um, so with that, there's one more, one more slide. I'm gonna, another eye chart I'm gonna hit you with here. And we will share this deck with everybody. And uh, I think this is, a, um, this is a great slide to show you because we've got people from really all over the world and, and in lots of different industries, but by and large selling online and I wanted to show this and, and I will, we will send this deck out because um, you could probably find yourself in here and see your specific industry and how much it's already started to grow due to COVID-19. Um, so again, we're not, we won't stay too long on this, but, um, but it's a great, it's a great, you know, chart to go look at and say where, you know, where do I fall in here? So with that, let's jump in. We are going to talk about eight things. Uh, eight great tips. You know, this is our roadmap to to how to take advantage of all this. We're going to talk about everything from site search, you know, to understanding your customer's intent, to how to leverage machine learning and AI, um, and some real, just very tangible, real tips like, you know, cart abandonment and how to better visualize um, when you merchandise and personalize products and and um, and the like, and if we have time, um, we also will um, talk about a few tips that we've seen with our customers um, around email marketing. And it's funny, I, I, whenever I bring up email marketing, everybody's says, "Well, you know, we all understand email marketing. You know, it's been around for for ages." But the one thing that always strikes me is we always underestimate the value of email marketing. And I thought this was a very, um, very important chart to just stop and pause and look at. So what this chart is showing us is this is this chart's from last month. It was actually ran just last month. Um, I'll have it in the notes when I send this out, but I think this is McKinsey. Um, and what it's showing us here is in the last nine weeks, you'll notice the, the dark blue and the green lines are open rates and click-through rates of email. And you'll see that they've shot up. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I, I read a lot about you know, what, what is the state of digital marketing. And I've heard a lot of you know, email is, has actually been less effective during this time. But according to this chart, um, I mean, we're actually seeing, and we see it ourselves too, and that's why we're bringing it up. We're actually seeing email be more effective. So I wanted to pause, take a moment mm -hmm. to talk about that. Erwin's certainly going to talk about some tips around that as well. Um, so with that, Erwin, please take it away. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, um, Jeremy. That was really great uh, information. Thanks for sharing. So I want to um, jump in here at uh, the one of the eight points that Jeremy has mentioned earlier. Point number one is we want to make sure that you are utilizing intelligent search for better conversion. Because when you will look at your stats, your Google Analytics um, data, you will notice that the most visited um, page on your site is the search page. So it's more visited than all the other, generally speaking. 
and also the uh, the amount of revenue that your searchers are generating into your store um, or in in an average e-commerce store is almost, oftentimes a third or even a half um, of your total revenue. So you have to make sure that your in search functionality on your site is really um, made to understand the user's intent and uh, to make it just uh, bring back results that are really counting. So here in the short example that you see here right now, searching for something very specific, white gold wedding ring for men or for women, <clears throat> you can see actually how the search engine not just understands uh, based on the context what you're looking for, but also looks at the um, results to return it as fast as possible. So the speed is here a huge factor um, besides the relevancy. But I would say the relevancy and the speed, they go just hand in hand. They have to be both at the top level if you want to um, really be at the top of your competition in the e-commerce world. So we have here as um, our second tip is to use a smart search that has an NLP search algorithm that also has dynamic search and filtering and that of course saves your customers time to find products online, especially for catalogs that have thousands or tens of thousands of products. Uh, it's vital to have a really high performing search technology. The third um, one is that, that I want to show you is like making sure that your online store understands the intent of your user, of your customer. Because oftentimes in an online world, it's the problem is you're disconnected as a retailer, you're disconnected from your customer. You don't know them personally, you don't see them face to face. And oftentimes they don't know how to approach your store online so it's really easy for them to just go back to um, where they came from and just going uh, to visit another store that sells the products that they're looking for so you, so you want to prevent um, your visitors to leave your site empty-handed and this is why it's so important to have um, a search technology that understands the intent because when your customers are searching for something very simple and very basic like in this case uh, searching for table, you don't want to show them table lamps as you see here oftentimes displayed. You want to just show them actual tables and exclude the table lamps. So your search engine, which is technically it's your it's your virtual salesperson, um, your salesperson has to be knowledgeable and has to know, has to understand the meaning behind every customer request. There's another example here uh, with um, that I want to show you actually a live example. I'm going to click here on this banner. It's going to take us to a site here. And when you type in here, just a simple search for term for hammer, this is actually an, uh, a site that is using an intelligent search technology uh, from Cellarboss. Um, and it understands the context of what you're looking for searching for hammer returns 200 items it's really easy to filter through to find the right product that you want to um, look for but if you search for hammer drill you will see that actually they do have quite a lot of um, hammer drills as well which um, the search again he understands that you're looking for something totally different it doesn't bring you back any um, hand tools, but it's actually bringing you back relevant results. So again, going back to Hammer, you'll see how actually it returns back only the hand tools and nothing, no power tools, no Hammer drills. So this is a stark contrast to some other um, sites that are that I gave you an example before with, with an example for table, searching for table here on this side, for example, that doesn't use an intelligent search and a search that uh, understands the intent, it's bringing back mostly tables, but also um, other non-relevant items in the search results. So this is quite frustrating, especially if you change the sorting 
from relevance, you change it to, let's say, price low to high, you'll see how the search term for table returns now completely irrelevant items. So this is something that you must avoid um, at all costs. So because just imagine in a regular store, a customer walks into the store and is looking for tables and the salesperson would lead that customer to uh, to products that are have nothing to do with tables, like table lamp and um, and dishes and so tableware and so on. So you got the point. Now back to um, the tips here. Tip number four: use machine learning and AI for a better customer experience. So what we mean with that and by that is like you can have the right results, as we have seen with the example of Hammer. Um, you can have the right results uh, from the first to the last page. But if you don't have the machine learning and AI do um, the product ranking and learning from your users search and click behavior, it's really difficult for you to rank the most relevant products at the top of the search results. So on the first, um, on the top left screenshot, what you see here is the search results for TVs. You have the four items display on the very top. They're not wrong, uh, but they're not the best items. So with the machine learning turned on, after a while, after just a few days, you can have already your entire store come alive. Your entire store, every search term, every search results page, and if you connect the smart engine, the machine learning and AI, you connect it also to your navigation pages, your, your category pages. Now you will transfer that knowledge also, not just to the search, but also to your category pages, which is in great, greatly, great added value. Okay, so you can see here really nicely on, a, on a, just a simple example, searching for TVs in both cases without machine learning up here and with machine learning down here. So tip, tip number five, cart abandonment. This is a huge topic, which um, something you have, if you don't have it already, um, you have to make sure that you do um, use this great technology. Uh, it's something that you can have uh, good ones and you can have not so good ones. I suggest you looking for a uh, cart abandonment tool that is um, using artificial intelligence to know to which customer to send when an email or a message on Facebook um, or yeah, just like a, an email to send uh, and to get them back into your store. Because when you look at the amount of, of um, value that lays in your shopping cart that your visitors have abandoned, uh, it's oftentimes much higher than your total revenue. So even if you gain back 10% or even 5% from the abandoned goods in the shopping carts on your site, it's already a huge advantage of getting that done. So I can just warmly and uh, strongly recommend um, to get a, to install basically a cart abandonment tool. And oftentimes it's just very easy to install. It's just like copying in onto your site a um, short uh, script or even through the Google Tag Manager. If you have that, you can install all that. Another thing is point number six or tip number six is to use visual merchandising and to highlight your promotions because oftentimes you don't have the luxury to um, uh, to just have uh, the, the products come back uh, randomly. Of course, we have the machine learning and AI that would rank products um, based on the, your, your users search and click behavior. But on the other hand, you have also the option to, or you should have the option to manually merchandise your search results pages, your category pages, your promotional pages. And this is something that really um, is something that many of our customers, uh, now in this case, Celebros, many of our customers are really love this tool to just go and promote and demote and and shuffle around here using the drag and drop feature 
and rule-based queries and create landing pages that they then use for um, Google AdWords or for their newsletters to just create landing pages or even um, create campaigns like um, all kinds of campaigns. So this is something that is a world on its own, like the whole visual merchandising um, topic and uh, about uh, in the e-commerce world is something not to be uh, overlooked. And it's, of course, it takes some um, some work and also to plan it out to know what to do. But this is why you have to have a strong uh, partner that would also give you advice along the way. All right, so here's another example how the visual merchandising can look like in a front end. Um, so to just illustrate uh, three different personalization or profiles that uh, depending on which, what customer is um, looking for products online. Uh, so you can see here on the left-hand side, we have the profile A um, ranked by clicks and views. So um, if you search for backpacks, you can have different sets of results slightly. And here you can have um, different for a different segment of visitors. And then you have also a third one and fourth one and so on. You can create additional profiles to just to return uh, more personalized results based on the customer type that is visiting your store. Um, another thing is cross-selling products. So the cross-selling is mainly um, used, uh, of course, everybody knows cross-sell from Amazon, but um, Amazon, of course, does all kinds of cross-selling. When you look at their product detail page, it's like tons of products uh, below the fold that um, are um, being recommended. But it doesn't always have to be the Amazon style. It can be very, um, uh, like, a, just to show the, your customers a few matching products. Like in this case, you have, you're looking at a women's uh, shorts, then you can recommend them a few other women's items. It can be a t-shirt, some other shorts, some pants, and um, some other products from different categories. Because what this will do, instead of showing just um, four other shorts, very similar to what you look at, at the end of the day, you just maybe purchase one of them. But the, the, the goal of the cross-sell recommendation engine should be to actually sell more items. So instead of the user just purchasing one item, they would now purchase two items or more because of the relevant recommendations that are being displayed on a product detail page. Um, and now we are getting to the last um, tip is to automate landing pages for Google. And this is also something really cool. I wanna show you some uh, a life example, which is when you, let's click again here on this page, searching on Google for Sanderson Blue Paint, you'll see here the results. This is like a real Google search. You have here the site, but look at this second link here um, that comes back. It's a search page. It's called stylelibrary.com slash search slash blue Sanderson paint. And of course you can also um, change the order um, blue instead of Sanderson blue paint, paint, you can search for blue Sanderson paint. You have the same thing here. Um, where is it up here? First search results, blue Sanderson paint, click on it. And this is how you gain traffic. Just using search results pages that are high performing and getting and, and having that um, populate with meta keywords and description and all the um, requirements for SEO and having that added to your sitemap. And now Google has the opportunity to, uh, and has the ability to just also crawl all your search results pages that are high performing. And now you are much, you have a much higher visibility on um, search engines like Google and Bing. So this is something that I highly recommend also to look into it um, to either um, 
automate that, automate that. Uh, of course, uh, preferably to automate it or to do it manually. Manually, of course, it takes more work and it's um, static after a while. You cannot, uh, you cannot keep up with it, but there's, um, there's some great options that we can share with you if you are interested in, can um, talk to us later on, uh, write us and find out more about the traffic builder. You can see here how excellently it's working. It's just uh, amazing. Hey, All right, so we, um, with this, have, I wanna pass it back on some, to uh, we've, got, we've got some questions on this and we've got a few minutes. Um, so let's, so, uh, I've got I've got a lot of interest in questions here. So, what exactly could you um, talk more about? How did that page get created? Are you saying that that's a that's a search result page that's coming from um, that's coming from the e-commerce platform, but it's coming from the search results of of the e-commerce platform, and it's showing up in Google when somebody types in specific keywords. Yes, um, so this is uh, something that we are not the inventor of this uh, technology, but we have um, refined it. We have made it possible to automatically generate these cert these landing pages that are actually static and can be crawled and indexed to Google. But we are using the knowledge of your site search visitors, your customers that are using your search now we have the data. We know exactly what they're searching for, which search uh, term performs well. And we are just taking that information and transform the search results, which are basically dynamic pages, which cannot be crawled. You're transforming now those search results pages into static landing pages and are having Google index it and you just suddenly you will notice how you will get more traffic into your site. All right, perfect. So, so without, averaging... without being too technical, um, yeah. yeah, that's. Okay, no, that's perfect. So, you know, so basically leveraging the intelligence you're gaining from how people are searching your site, that's step number one is, is you know, if we were to give some folks some takeaway nuggets here is, is go in and, you know, leverage your, your own search software that you're using today and see what are the top performing um, keywords that are occurring there. And from there, you have an option of either, you know, if your current technology allows you to, you can automate um, landing pages that are rich with metadata so that they show up in, in search engines like Google. Or you could just go the manual yeah. route and literally just leverage that data. Yeah, and a few more slides, and then I pass it on to Jeremy. I want to also, of course, um, mention and recommend you to measure everything that you do on your site. You have to measure before, after. You have to track the 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 success of whatever you did. Otherwise, you just waste of your time if you if you tweak something, if you install a new technology and you just trust that it will work, that it will bring you in more revenue. But um, if you don't do any measurements, uh, if you don't keep track of it, it's very risky that uh, you will just waste your time and money with installing new technologies. So um, what you see right now here is, is a few stats from, um, one of our customers that we have, uh, I think, when did they go live? Um, last year, yeah, last year in January, they went live. So this is a long, long-term study. You can see, like, uh, from January, entire year 2019 plus eight months, so 20 months, um, uh, 21st, basically the 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 first 20 months um, of going live with an intelligent search and pretty much most of the features that I've mentioned in these eight points, um, they have had tremendous increase in revenue in site search conversion rate. What you're looking right now is just site search on the left-hand side. Uh, the site search revenue has increased by 172%, the conversion rate by 70%, transaction again by 170. And here's the ratio between visits with site search generate almost half of the entire revenue 
uh, visits with without site search here. So you can see how much, how important a good search functionality on your site is. And then you can see also here the conversion rate of users using the search and users that don't use a search. So that's uh, sometimes a huge difference. We have even see up to, seen up to 10, uh, 10 fold difference. So um, what a site search users were 10 times more likely to convert into a, a customer. So this is a uh, screenshot from Google Analytics from one of the sites that we manage. Uh, this is also something that you can, what you can see right now here is visitors without search have increased by the transactions and revenue has increased by 25%, transaction by 32%. Uh, the sessions have only increased by 17%. So now after installing the intelligent search technology and merchandising, now this usage of that search has gone up drastically. The revenue has gone up even more. And of course the transaction as well. So you can see how actually because of the stark increase in usage in, in sessions, now you have also a huge increase in revenue. So you, wanna, you want to make sure that you, when you install a new technology that it actually brings you in a positive ROI. Like in this case, it was probably uh, like a 20 fold um, uh, doubling of 20 fold ROI um, on their basically return on their investment. Jeremy, take it away from here. All right. Hey, well, thank you, Erwin. That was awesome. And like I said, everybody, we'll we'll get you these this deck because it's got it's got a lot of these great tips in it that I think you can take away. So um, to take it away, I'm really going to wrap it up <laughs> and give you guys, everybody here, some time back in their day, which is always nice. Um, if you can't say something succinctly, then you don't know what you're saying. And we like to be very succinct um, and very quick. So we're going to wrap it up early. I just want to leave everybody with uh, with with one thing. We have we have come up with just based on looking at all our clients and and how they operate and how we've helped them and and just you can imagine we we work a lot on moving the needle right moving the needle for our clients right and that needle is revenue um, with their e-commerce platform whatever it is uh, and we've done that you know by engaging with them and trying to create a singular focus out of their traffic and their conversion and their average order size, right? We've come up with an equation, a revenue equation, we call it, right? And this is the ideal picture, right? Let's start at the base of the mountain and let, let's climb up it. However, when we typically engage with clients, we, we tend to find that just because of perhaps bloated tech stacks and, 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 and different teams, uh, maybe not in alignment, you know, we tend to find that they're heading up the mountain, you know, in several different paths. And uh, there's not always alignment. Um, so with that, you know, we, we have come up with this equation, you know, that if we focus on traffic and conversion and average order value, that's what's going to get us to the revenue. And there's a couple key takeaways here, right? Uh, one is if you're just working with a company that focuses on conversion, uh, and another company that just focuses on traffic and another company that just focuses on average order value. Um, well, then to each of those companies, right, every every problem is going to be a nail because the only thing they have is a hammer, right? You know, if you go to a conversion company and say, how's my conversion? They're going to say, oh, it's terrible. We can improve that, right? But a better route to go would be to have somebody to look at all of these aspects, right? Because what if your conversion is actually doing really, really well? And by touching it, you could actually negatively impact it versus positively impact it. Well, you'd want somebody to be able to say, leave your conversion. Let's go focus on traffic or let's go focus on, on AOV. And that's an approach that we have found very effective, right? By telling somebody what to touch and what not to touch. Uh, and so with that, you know, we... we um, we put a lot of uh, analysis reports together for clients and, and help them kind of create that singular focus, you know, up the mountain. So with that, uh, we're right on time here. Um, it's, it's 35 minutes after the hour. And um, this has been, this has been a great, great um, session. And we certainly hope you um, are able to take away some of these, some of these aspects. Um, so thank you so much for your time. 
Um, I'm Jeremy LaDuke. You've been listening to Erwin Siegel go through the, the eight aspects and tips um, that he's brought to the table. And our email addresses are here if you, if you do want to reach out. Um, some questions have come through that I didn't get a chance to answer or ask Erwin. Just know that we've captured those and we will certainly follow up and, and answer those questions offline. Um, we don't want to leave you hanging there. Um, but I did want to end this early so, so as to give everybody back um, some time in their day. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Erwin. Yeah, thank you. All right. And, and uh, everybody, uh, you know, expect an email with uh, the recording in the deck here um, soon. Yeah. And, uh, and have a wonderful day. Yeah, see, um, you can see here our email addresses also if you want to send us a personal email um, on our email addresses, eseagull at bridgeline.com or j.duke at bridgeline.com. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email uh, if you have any questions, if you have a, a demo request, if you want to have a live demo or just a review of your site to um, have someone uh, look at them. We have some additional, we have some experts um, in e-commerce user experience that can give you an insight of your own um, online store. And uh, this is of course all free of charge, um, this consultation. So feel free to send us an email about that as well. Great, thanks Erwin. And thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank you, bye-bye.